So, Intel's new 7th gen KB Lake processors are here. They're out and we've already got a video on how the new chips, the Core i7-7700K and the Core i5-7600K perform compared to their 6th gen Skylake predecessors. Click the little eye in the corner to watch that one. As we noted in that video, KB Lake is backwards compatible with any given Skylake Z170 motherboard provided its manufacturer has released a BIOS update that enables that compatibility. But like hot dogs and hot dog buns, KB Lake processors are made to work the best with KB Lake Z270 motherboards. Sure, you can eat a hot dog and a hamburger bun, but it's the natural. So in this video, we're going to look at the specific differences between the two chipsets, Z170 and Z270, using ASUS' new lineup of Z270 boards, and we'll also talk about some of the upgrades that these new boards in particular bring to the table over their Z170 predecessors. So, the question is, if you're running Skylake right now and you're set to grab a new KB Lake CPU, should you also upgrade to Z270 while you're at it? It's a pretty specific question, and most people upgrading to KB Lake won't be coming from Skylake, they'll be coming from an older uh, chipset, but it's an interesting question to look at nonetheless. Like the question of how to eat a hot dog in a hamburger bun. But that's for another time. Now, KB Lake is built on the same 14 nanometer process as Skylake and Broadwell, and it's also built on the same basic microarchitecture as Skylake as well. Intel used to follow a TikTok release schedule where a tick was a new fabrication process and a talk was a new microarchitecture, but KB Lake represents the optimization stage of Intel's new process architecture optimization release schedule. As such, there aren't many super revolutionary new features on the new platform, but it does provide a pretty solid boost in performance, especially for overclockers, as we explained in Jack's video, and it also adds support for a number of features that weren't readily available in Z170. So, if you upgrade to a KB Lake CPU, but keep your Z170 motherboard, you'll get a performance increase, but you'll probably be missing out on some features that you could have with the Z270 motherboard. Keep in mind, these are new features that you might be missing out on on the motherboard side, not on the CPU. There are some new uh, architecture optimizations in the actual CPU that'll work just fine in a Z170 motherboard. Now first off, Z270 supports more PCIe lanes with a maximum 24 lanes to Z170's 20, pumping up the bandwidth for GPUs, M.2 SSDs, and so on. It also supports a higher max number of high-speed I.O. or HSIO lanes, 30 compared to 26 in Z170, so that means more and faster ports available on the newer chipset. Z270 also supports the newest version of Intel Rapid Storage Technology, version 15, while you're stuck with boring old version 14 on Z170. Psh. Lame. Now, Z270 does not have native support for USB 3.1 Gen 2, that's with 10 gigabits per second, max transfer speed, by default, but a lot of motherboard manufacturers are adding it in themselves. Some higher-end Skylake motherboards already had this feature, but others didn't, although you could also get add-in cards for that and stuff like that. But chances are, with a decent Z270 motherboard, that feature will be there because the manufacturer has added it. Now, one Z270 feature that is particularly interesting is support for Intel Optane, the company's new 3D NAND memory technology. I say interesting and not crucial because there aren't actually any products on the market, as of filming this video anyway, that use Intel Optane. Optane SSDs are supposed to enter the market at some point this year, and when they do, they're expected to blow traditional SSDs away in terms of performance and longevity, so Intel is adding adding Optane support to Z270 boards to prepare for the introduction of those drives later. Now, those are actually pretty much the only features inherent to the actual Z270 chipset, but motherboard manufacturers use the release of new chipsets to make their own custom upgrades to their product lines, like I was to, talking about with USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is why we've got some of Asus' new stuff here today. Joining me are four boards representing Asus' four main product series, Prime, Tough, Strix, and ROG. All of them feature significant upgrades over last gen, like multiple M.2 slots, USB Type-C ports, and improved audio capability, but let's start with Prime. Now, Prime is sort of the basic best bang for your buck type of uh, line. It's replacing the Deluxe series that was uh, on X99 and Z170 with that uh, distinctive white armor. It's got a clean look without a ton of unnecessary doohickeys, although it does support ASUS Aura Sync feature, which lets you coordinate RGB lighting between all your ASUS products. The Prime Z270A also has Fan Expert 4, which utilizes the additional temperature sensors in the board to customize individual fan speeds in response to different sources, like the CPU, GPU, or other components. Next up, the Tough series, led by the Mark I. Here we have the signature thermal armor, but it's not just an aesthetic addition, although it does make the board 
look badass. The armor includes dust defenders to protect from buildup and even has a mounting point for a fan you can get separately to help cool the VRM. The tough fortifier backplate makes the board super easy to handle but also prevents flexing from heavy components being added. Tough boards are also designed to be two times more durable than regular boards, offering increased protection from static shocks and power surges. Honestly, picking up a tough board is fantastic because you aren't worried about breaking any of the components because they're all protected. It's real nice. Now Strix is here too. It's now being integrated into ASUS ROG sub-brand as the Pro Gamer offering. Here we have the flagship Z270E along with the Z270F, which is just a notch below on the hierarchy. The Strix lineup fully supports ASUS Aura Sync, uh, which as I mentioned, lets you synchronize lighting between your motherboard, graphics cards, RAM, LED strips, keyboard, and mice, if you have all those compatible. The Z270E has a new dedicated USB 3.1 front panel connector, co-designed with Intel. ASUS says a lot of cases are going to be coming out onto the market soon with the compatible internal connector for that, so this will get you full 10 gigabit USB 3.1 through a front I.O. port, so that's pretty cool. Strix boards also have improved audio with new dual headphone amps, one for the rear and one for the front, as well as the new Sonic Studio, which lets you set per application sound profiles and also lets you amplify specific audio frequencies if you really want to get fancy. Speaking of fancy, we finally got into the top end of the lineup with the ROG Maximus line. The Maximus 9 Hero we've got here has pretty much all the features of the previous boards, and then some. Fan Expert 4, Aura Sync, the new USB 3.1 header, dual headphone amps with even better audio quality thanks to the Supreme FX audio codec that they put on their Maximus boards. It isn't the absolute flagship that honor belongs to the Maximus 9 Extreme we checked out at CES with the integrated water block, but the Hero has some impressive water cooling features itself with new dedicated headers for water pumps and AIO coolers and an additional header for water flow monitoring as well. It also has auto tuning which is ASUS auto overclocking solution which is CPU specific and factors in your cooling and performance load so it adjusts the clock and voltage according to whether your system is pretty much idle or doing something intensive like playing a game so that's really cool it kind of takes all the, the really hard work out of overclocking. All right, hopefully that gave you a pretty solid idea of the type of new features that you're looking at when considering the move to a Z270 board. Now, as is pretty much always the case, you're better off upgrading after you've had the same CPU and motherboard for at least a few generations of CPUs and motherboards, not people, as the performance and feature benefits are very iterative. They don't change that much, but at least now you've been educated. That's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Click over here for the previous videos and check us out on Twitter. Our handles are down there. But as always, like the video if you liked it. Comment below for fans with benefits. Subscribe. Click this button right here for more videos like this from NCIX. And uh, we'll see you next time. I have to very delicately put these away. <laughs>